Welcome back to another video, doing something a little bit different today, actually doing a, a teardown, I guess you could call it. For anyone who doesn't know, this is an IKEA air purifier that costs about $100 Australian. They're actually really good value for money. I have been running one of these as the new generation air purifier in my laser cutter for probably three months now, and it's been absolutely amazing for its form factor and everything about it and how you can customize it. It's just a really good piece of equipment that doesn't cost too much money. It only comes standard with this large surface area HEPA filter, but you can get an additional charcoal filter which goes in behind it. So you get two stage filtration. Well, technically it's actually three stage filtration because you've got this sort of cloth filter that goes over the front and catches all the large dust particles. Then it goes into the HEPA and then into the charcoal, etc., etc. But the only thing I don't like about these HEPA filters is that they have a stepped switch on it, which only has three speeds and off. And I've been wondering, can I modify one of these things so I have variable speed control? And I don't know if this is possible or not. And, I don't, and the other thing I'm curious about is, is this thing actually maxed out in regards to what the fan can do? Whatever type of fan is inside this, I don't know. So we're gonna do a tear down on this and have a look inside it, see if the fan's a piece of crap or if it's actually got some decent guts inside it. So let's start tearing this down. So this is a really nice surprise to see in something from Ikea, to be honest. Like this is a Nidec fan. Nidec is one of the best in the business when it comes to fans, motors, stuff like that. Uh, there's Nidec, there's Delta, there's uh, Sanyo Danke, a few others to, to name, but these are among the best of the best. And this is, this is just not going to fail. And I'm really surprised to see this type of motor inside a unit like this. this is, I've seen this in other machinery I've worked on. It's got sort of a flywheel type design where it has a lot of inertia in the back drum, uh, which helps to smooth out vibrations and keep this thing just really quiet overall without any harmonics. It's a very nice piece of kit. Uh, it uses an NSK bearing made in Indonesia on the front. So NSK bearings, again, are excellent. Uh, this motor is also a PWM type design so it takes 24 volts it has a ground but it has a clock signal which sets the RPM through all the logic that is underneath on this uh, this PCB under here but yeah this motor takes a constant 24 volts you're not changing the fan or sorry the motor voltage as such you're adjusting the clock signal to set the RPM for this uh, motor and that has a lot of advantages in regards to maintaining torque when you want slower speeds, keeps things more linear and it has some nice uh, rubber isolation here for the casing when it's, uh, when it's seated back in its place. They really, really paid a lot of attention to trying to keep this thing as quiet as possible and then you have a giant um, hamster cage, hamster wheel, whatever you want to call it, or a blower type fan, uh, which has a really nice arrangement and it can move quite a bit of air. So I'm quite surprised to see this level of engineering in something that costs $100, to be honest. Also forgot to mention, this is pretty easy to take apart overall, other than these absolute pain in the butt security screws that are used around the chassis. Uh, you either need the security bit to remove these, which I don't have, and I don't know many people that do, but I was able to get these out with a flat blade that just happened to be the right size to fit into the corners of the triangle. And that allowed me to 
back them out. So yeah, that is one way to get them removed. You just got to be careful not to strip them or do anything weird to them. But a flat blade does get the job done. So this is the brains of the operation. There's not a lot to it. We've got 24 volts and ground coming in. That comes from the plug pack at the wall. Uh, there's a switch here, which I believe is what resets the filter status. Uh, there is a switch here, which is like a rotary switch for selecting the fan speed. Not sure what that is. I think that's an inductor by the looks of it. LED. And on here, this is the motor output. So we've got 24 volts coming out. There's a ground, there's a clock signal, and there's FG, which I don't know what that is. I'm assuming that might be RPM feedback from the motor. Uh, and on the back, I've added a couple of wires just so we can hook up my oscilloscope to see what that clock signal actually is. And I originally thought that these resistors were what was responsible for somehow setting the RPM because it's going to each leg of this uh, rotary switch, but that doesn't appear to be the case. It appears to be related to this chip here, which I'll overlay the part number, but it's some sort of a flash ROM by the looks of it, which has probably been programmed and probably not much use if you wanted to hack one of these things. There is five volts here, but there is no five, five volts coming in. So obviously there is a regulator, which might be U2 possibly. Some diodes, some resistors, capacitors, a few other things going on. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up my scope. Uh, we're gonna have a look at the clock signal that's going out and what that is doing to the motor in regards to RPM. And that gives us an idea of if this thing is maxed out or if we've got some headroom to play with. So I've got everything set up. Um, I've got a tachometer here right at the bottom. Uh, which is watching the drum of the motor and I've put some reflective tape on here so it's going to watch that spin around and we're going to take a reading off that as it comes around. Got the oscilloscope hooked up that's going to the clock signal going into the motor so we can see the relationship of the clock signal versus the motor RPM so let's start this up. We'll go to the first speed and it just takes a little bit to get going because this motor's got a bit of inertia behind it and so the first signal is 100 hertz which is absolutely bang on 100 hertz and that equates to about 400 rpm so i'm going to take it up to the second speed now we're looking at 220 hertz give or take seems to be about 880 rpm yep it's holding at 880 so maximum speed we're looking at roughly a 300 hertz clock signal and 1200 RPM. So that is the maximum speed this motor is running at. I'm gonna go and have a quick look at the data sheet and see what this motor is actually rated for because that seems incredibly slow. All right, so I've made about as much progress as I can for uh, this video. So what have I learned? Well, basically this controller is way smarter than I gave it credit for. It is monitoring the RPM output of this motor constantly, and if the RPM is too low, too high, or if the motor stalls, it will cut the power supply to the motor, which is a good safety feature, but it makes it quite hard to hack this motor because if you overdrive the motor with a higher clock signal than what this is currently set to on the switch, it will start doing things like trying to compensate or shut it down it just does whatever it feels like really also interesting if you drag your finger on the motor to slow it down this does seem to be able to compensate and try to bring the rpm back up to the set point that it's supposed to be operating at which i guess is handy when you've got different filters that you can run in this thing you've got this giant squirrel cage fan that you know, it's got a, quite a bit of inertia behind it. So it does know what is going on and it can adjust the fan speed accordingly. So can you hack this thing? Yes, you can, but you would have to throw away the entire brains, I think. You would have to put 24 volts straight to the motor, uh, obviously putting a fuse in there and a switch or whatever you need. And you can feed it an artificial clock signal from a 555 timer or whatever floats your boat. 50% duty cycle, and uh, this is 400 hertz at the moment, which is about 1500 RPM. That is about as much as I can get out of it. It should be able to do about 2000 RPM, maybe up to 2400 RPM. 
according to the spec sheet I can find, but I've tried putting higher frequencies in and it just won't go any faster than this. I am running it on 24 volts directly, so I'm controlling the fan directly at the moment. The uh, clock signal is coming from my DAC. Yes, I know I shouldn't be using a DAC for square waves, but my square wave generator is broken at the moment. So this overshoot that is happening in the clock signal might be related to why it won't go any quicker. I don't think so, but it is what it is at the moment. But yeah, it seems like if you can generate a square wave from, say, 50 hertz up to 700 hertz, maybe, that should max out what this motor is capable of. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. You can definitely hack this thing. It just depends how far you want to go with it. I don't really need it to go quicker than what it is. I may do that if I have to go to all the trouble for it. All I really want is a variable potentiometer to dial up the speed without those set increments, which I can definitely do with a, with a little 555 timer circuit and just controlling the speed uh, with a potentiometer. So we may do that in a future video, but this was more to open this thing up and see what makes it tick and can we uh, figure something out with it. 1500 RPM is the max at the moment and uh, we may do a future video if people want to see that, let me know. So this is what the video was all about, uh, what I intended to do with this thing other than just opening it up and seeing what hacking potential it had. This is my new fume extractor for my workbench. I haven't had one up to this point and I feel like a complete idiot for never doing it. But lately working on 70s and 80s amplifiers with that are just covered in lacquer and old solder, it was just really starting to get to me and I had to do something about it. So I just wanted to open this thing up to remove the, the strap that sits on the top of it, have a look inside it and just show you guys this is what it's going to be. It's just sitting on top of my bench. I think it looks really good. It's nice and clean, fits really nicely. I've actually got it mounted to the back wall. Uh, footprint is not too large and it vents out the side so it blows all the air away even though it's got three stages of filtration which I think is going to catch anything anyway. And obviously we've got the little switch here which has got easy access. This is maximum speed. It's pulling quite a bit of air. I overlay some footage showing it just pulling up all the smoke that I was just doing some test soldering with, just seeing how it was performing. And it seems to be doing the job quite nicely. Probably the only thing I would like to do is maybe add a hood over the top of it to help direct the airflow into it more. And that will probably uh, just give it a bit more suction to grab any air that's just sort of rising up which always tends to blow up into my face but this thing in my laser cutter had no trouble sucking up huge amounts of smoke when i'm doing 40 watt laser cut burns so i have no doubt that it's going to easily do the job when it comes to soldering so yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and uh if you want a cheap fume extractor for soldering that doesn't cost a thousand dollars plus i would probably give one of these a go over one of those cheap chinese things on aliexpress or whatever it's just way better designed with three filter stages and yeah uh until then i will see you in the next video